Can you sing, Dolly, maybe? Dolly. She sings happy Dolly. birthday. It's not very good. Okay, it's really good. Siren, can you sing happy birthday? Hello. What is going on, y'all? I am coming to you live from the Maya Compound headquarters. He's not afraid of anything, mm -hmm. so we're gonna meet a bunch of animals today. You guys are gonna meet the animals. I'm gonna teach you about the animals, and then we're gonna have a push-up contest. <laughs> <laughs> It's all part about, you know, making the world a better place. And I think the Sanctuary and Maya are, are doing that in tenfold. So I support it unconditionally. And I'm, I'm, I've been so happy to see it here today. Donna, 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 Donna. Look, look at him. He's like, he's like the, 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 the battle toad from Naruto. Believe it. Uh, hey, Georgie, you, you. That is what his voice sounds like. Georgie, you're so adorable. Is look, that not look, look, exactly? Look at you. Look at you. God, he's so girthy. I love him. He's huge. So I can just. You ready? What, what do I do? You want to hold him? I can hold him? Yeah, yeah. No cat? Uh, yeah. All right, Put so I, how hands. about you? You want to cut like this? Yeah. And I'll just place him in your hands. He's so trusty. Georgie! I love him. They're friends. Oh, Georgie, you're so, you're so adorable. <laughs> So I see his like the tank is off screen here, but I see his tank. It has like a little like, little little dirt pile. Water feature and his dirt pile. You, would you say he primarily hangs out in the dirt? He most? does. He okay. hangs out in the dirt and then he goes in the water to poop. I see. And then goes back in the dirt. Heard that? Okay. Ah, <laughs> uh, Georgie, he's he's so he's so indifferent. He doesn't even care that I'm holding him. He's just like chilling. He's just like he just takes over territory. Like you know, oh this hand my hand now and i'm just like okay okay you, you chose my hand okay fine i'll i'll, I'll take it yeah, georgie was awesome georgie was like super super awesome <gasps> next one <gasps> i do think i do think reptiles are cool can you show them your tongue please wow that's nice he's a blue-tongued skink wow do you like to hold him i would how do i uh he's kind of long just support as much of his body okay. as you can okay this so, is toaster strudel is he um so he we don't know oh, oh man sure so is the is the tongue how how it smells? It's to it's to, yes, and it's to show other animals that he's poisonous, but he's not. Oh, so it's like it's a... called dimatic display. He's fake. He's lying. He's mm. a liar. He likes you. Mm. He's all relaxed. That's mm -hmm. nice. Oh, he likes you. <laughs> he's like looking Chat, at him. I am. I am <laughs> so like. Cute. I am just like. This is adorbs right now. I, I, I can't. I'm, I'm cheeking right that. now. I'm not even farming right now, y'all. That is like. I've never mm. seen him do that. Really? No. Oh, he's doing. Yeah. Is that he's... nice, buddy? So why toaster strudel? How did that name come to be? Were you just like really hungry that day, or like? Toaster strudel was born on July fourth. Mm -hmm. And so we were like, what is a uniquely American food? Because he was born on the 4th of July. And then we were like, oh, Pop-Tarts. Uh, and then we were like, Pop-Tarts is kind of a dumb name, but Pop-Tarts are like toaster strudels, which are not American, I guess. Uh, <laughs> so that's how we got there. I see, I see. <laughs> no, very, very fitting name here. Yeah, that's the whole story. Mm. You wanna go do a close-up with him? You can go sure. walk up to that camera. <laughs> toast, are you so happy there? So when when Toast laid its head on my chest and was, you know, just doing the whole like, getting really affectionate, that was like really touching for me. Like, uh, come on, move in, you know? I'm, no, this, this, is a, this is a one bedroom high rise right here and Toast was all about it and so was I. These right. are Madagascar hissing cockroaches. Ooh, I love These them. These are huge roaches, huh? Yeah, they're, yeah, they're, they're this girthy. This is one of the largest species of cockroach. They are from Madagascar. Look yeah, they can them. be like two, no. three inches. Uh, and this is Barbara. You can see her little eye. She's looking at yeah, you. you. you Isn't that add, cute? You can add an uwu, little uwu blush line across the face. and. Uh, okay, she's kind of cute, right? Mm -hmm. Look, she's looking at you. You want to hold her? Yes. So cockroaches are super important for the same reason uh, that isopods are important. They are detritivores. So they break down organic matter and make it into soils that we can use to grow new things. They're really important. A lot of people see cockroaches and they're like, yuck, dirty. Like mm -mm. cockroaches are gross. Mm -mm. Turns out cockroaches are in your dirty space to clean it up because that's their job is to recycle organic matter. So I like to say that cockroaches are like a firefighter and they're coming to put it out. You don't get mad at firefighters for being at the side of a fire because they're not the problem. They're there to fix it. You know what I mean? Absolutely. I'm really passionate about that. Clean your room. <laughs>
while I was just running a mile a minute, I would let her go on my hand and she was going from hand to hand. I had to like forearm to forearm and I was running out of like, I was running out of like, if you will hear a forearm highway for Barbara to climb over. She was so eager to just like to traverse all over me. Okay, so what you, what you got now? Follow me. Follow me. Hello. Who's here? Who's that? <laughs> um, okay, over there, you're looking at Siren and Mia. This is probably the one that you think of when you think of, when you think of uh, parrots talking. Right. African greys are really smart and have the potential to have a really large vocabulary. Right. Mia makes it, I'm speaking. Mia. <laughs> is that funny? What's so funny? Mia makes a lot of sound effects. Like she does a lot of the birds in the area. Um, she'll do like a microwave beep and like a truck backing up and whatever that is. And then Siren does a lot of talking. Can you say hello? Hello. That's nice. Hello. So, a lot of people see parrots online. They see videos of them like talking, dancing. They're like, all right, want one. Same with the snakes. People do take a lot of parrots out of the wild for the pet trade. Um, so that's a problem. And then the other problem is they get parrots and it's like having a two-year-old that can chew through wood and break skin and cause hearing loss for 60 years, which just uh, uh -oh. isn't something that most people can handle. And right. so a lot of parrots end up in rescues. I'm just thinking about how like mobile, a, like I guess like a non-domestic, any kind of bird would be. And mm -hmm. it's like anything like short of this just sounds like you're just like throwing it like in the world's most depressing fishbowl. Yeah, a lot of people have birds in really small cages. Can you sing maybe? She sings happy birthday, it's not very good. Okay, it's really good. Siren, can you sing happy birthday? Hello. Birthday, happy birthday to you. She's not gonna sing happy birthday. Usually, um, it's her favorite thing to do. But not today. Birthday. <laughs> Did you hear it? Yeah, birthday. yeah. Birthday. <laughs> okay, uh -oh. they hate the almonds. Sorry, Siren is a blue-fronted Amazon. Mia is an African gray. And then over here, these ones are Wow, uh, a lot. they are beautiful. Beautiful, right? Oh, they're so beautiful. You wanna see how strong their beaks are? Yes. You can have a competition with Tico. This is Tico, Tico's a blue and gold macaw. I'm gonna give you this pecan. <gasps> okay. And you can go against Tico and how fast you break it. One, two, three, go. So it's quite, it's cool. I Tico's giving you a head start because she's cocky. Jesus. Embarrassing. I can't, I can't she get it. it. Like, <laughs> like it's nothing. Embarrassing, he loses. Yeah, um, sorry y'all, soy, soy and jazz. <laughs> no, nah, the macaw is just naturally, just genetically superior. I mean, if we went for like a, a decibel, like, you know, scream off, I would lose. Breaking the, the nut, I would lose. Uh, who can jump higher, who can fly higher, you know, I would lose. I mean, there's very little I can do here. I mean, the matchup, it is what it is. Um, you know, that's why birds are superior. He said he could only do uh, 45 push-ups, so... Um, only 45? Ready. Ready. Set. Set. Go. <laughs> Three. <laughs> oh. Give me a chicken. Stompy is the first ambassador that we got at Alveas. Uh, he is two years old, and he's really oh. nice, and he likes oh. hugs. He's so oh, nice. The, the under eyelid going <laughs> up. He's so cute. Uh, Stompy we got from a zoo in California. His mom wouldn't sit on his egg, so it was incubated, uh -huh. and then he was raised by people. You can pet him. You can hug him. You can hang out. I come in peace. A hug, chicken? That's nice. Aw, he's so nice. You guys are friends. Stompy also ate my ring. This one? Oh, just like ate it? Yeah, when he was 14 or 16 days old, uh, he was like watermelon size. Oh. He was like this big, mm -hmm. like little So did you have bird. to like Endoscopy. Him... <laughs> have you ever heard emus vocalize? No. It's so crazy. Stompy does like a really low guttural growl and it's very dinosaur-y. But female emus make a drumming sound and it sounds echoey and it's like, it literally sounds like a giant drum coming from inside. That's crazy. Yeah. It's so crazy. I think I think an absolute staple of uh, the highlight of my tour today was going into the pasture with Stompy the emu. And um, Stompy is so affectionate and just like, 
Stompy is like the all the best parts of of birds and a dog merged together. It's just so affectionate and just I I wants to be cuddled, wants attention, wants to be all up in your business. You know, just like it's it's all Stompy's awesome. All right, over here we have four more friends. This is Winnie the Moo. You can pet her. She's amazing. She's a cow. Oh, oh. That's my horse. Don't worry about him. He's not a part so of this. So just pet. <laughs> yeah, you can pet her just wherever. Pet? You can pet her on her neck. Um, actually, you can brush her. She loves being brushed. She's gonna brush. Okay. She really likes being scratched like this mm. under her neck. Okay. If you wanna do that. You okay. Give her a little scratchy you know scratch. You like this? Winnie, mm. so nice. <laughs> she is thrilled. So. We got her from a beef operation in Oklahoma. Uh, she is now past the point where she would have been sent off for slaughter. Uh, she was going to be a beef cow. Uh, but now she lives here and we talk to people about the beef industry. Mm -hmm. Beef industry is a huge problem, mm -hmm. um, not just because of the animal welfare problems that come with it, but a lot of deforestation happens to make room for cattle operations. And cows produce a ton of methane. So I don't, did you hear her kind of like burp there? Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, I actually, I learned this here that the one of the largest sources of uh, unspoken okay. methane um, accumulation comes from agriculture. Yeah. So, Winnie, big cow, right? Mm -hmm. Seven hundred pounds, maybe. I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, she only eats like hay and grain, but can sustain this huge body. It's because she's a ruminant, so she has several stomachs, and she draws nutrients out. Of, will you leave me alone? She draws nutrients out of grass that we can't do because we don't have the stomach microbes for it, but she does. And when she's doing that digestive process, a byproduct of the digestion is methane. It's a gas, it's a greenhouse gas. So then she digests what she's eating, she burps and she farts and she releases methane into the environment, which is fine as a natural process, but we do it at an unnatural rate. That's why it's not fine. Hello. Oh my God. <laughs> These are the marmosets. We have two oh of them. Oh my god. Um, this is Momo. He's a black tufted marmoset. And this is Appa. Momo and Appa. He's a common marmoset. Hi, buddy. He might pee on you. He okay. might be if, coming if, if up so, that's, to you. If so, that's fine. That's really nice, buddy. I'm just gonna. Yeah, that's great. See what happens. You can face him if it's yeah. Um, <laughs> so. Yeah. If he pisses on me, that means he was. That, that's like what, comfortable or just like They just territory? pee on everything. Okay. They scent post everything, they mark everything. It's a monkey thing, you know? Um, monkeys are seed dispersers. So in the wild, they'll eat fruit, swing around and shit everywhere mm -hmm. to help with forest regrowth. Really terrible for inside your house, obviously. I see. Um, so, so just like, just like hello. hundred Do zero here, like monkeys are not to be. Monkeys like, are not pets. Uh, so the reason we have these guys is to talk about the pet trade primarily um, and like the exploitation of wild animals in the pet trade. Um, it's also just really unfair to them to be inside. This is the first enclosure that they've ever had where they're outside and like can see the outside. Mm -hmm. They were living in like a little kind of like bird cage inside someone's house. Uh, they had vitamin D deficiencies because there's not enough sunlight, um, muscle atrophy because they couldn't move enough. Um, so they really do need outside spaces. These are Brazilian monkeys too. Um, so if you look in here, they have a whole inside room. It's Ooh. like this except inside. They have AC in there. You have good vibes. I, Animals like good vibes. I think the vibes are if you come off as approachable and uh -huh. just like and like not what's the word here? Prejudice. I I I, I understand it's like okay, you don't want to approach any animal overhanded. You yeah, want to be that too. you want to overhand, but you want to overhand with an approach, not overhand with a con unconsensual touch. Yeah. So it's like underhand, non-threatening, and then you just wait. Yeah. Let them smell, let them identify, let them come to you. Yeah. That's really nice, Appa. They, uh, one is very, very timid, one is very, very curious, and to my surprise, uh, one of them immediately came and, like, you know, crawled across my, my arm, um, on the, on top of my shoulders and my traps, and just, like, kind of, like, hung out there, getting a feel for, like, you know, what's it like, and, um, and I, which I thought was okay, yeah, they're just gonna be curious here, but Maya seemed surprised by how affectionate and quickly he was eager to, to explore and, and, you know, you know, ride my limbs, so to speak, here. And I was like, oh, wow, this is actually, this is really, really cool. And that made me feel really good about my attitude towards approaching animals and just coming in with like pure affection first and zero stigma.
Oh my God. <laughs> These are the foxes. Oh my God. We have two American red foxes. One of them is not red. Uh, and it's because he was born in captivity for the pet trade. Mm -hmm. So he was confiscated from the illegal pet trade in California. Why can't a dog lover just adopt a fox? Most places it's illegal. Um, they're also just wild animals. They're not domesticated. Foxes scent post a lot. So like the monkeys, they'll just pee on everything, poop on everything. They're also seed dispersers, so they'll run around and poop everywhere. And just generally speaking, you'll see as we go in here, uh, they just don't act like dogs. Um, people get foxes and they, like Finn, they want them to be Dogs. different colors. Okay. Yeah. Um, they started domesticating foxes in Russia and what they found is they were so excited because they're like, we start getting foxes that have spots and they sit and they fetch and they come to their name and they have a natural uh, lack of fear of people. Mm -hmm. And it was like, you're like, they're just making a dog, you know? Here you go. That's nice. Good, brave boy. Um, so yeah, they just, they don't do as well in a house as a dog does because they're not domesticated. Do they like affection? Do they, or they don't really like, they're not, not really keen on- You can't really touch them. Huh? Yeah, you can't really touch them. Gotcha. Um, nice. We've worked on touching as like a husbandry behavior, so they're comfortable if we have to give them injections or like treat a wound or something. Yeah, just, uh, but you can't in. like gotcha. pet them yeah, like yeah, a I'm dog. Yeah, yeah, I'm just coming in underhanded, passive. Yeah, it's they... nice, he's just looking for food. Yeah. This is Reed. Uh, back here. Reed was born in the wild. He was orphaned in the wild though, was raised by people. So kind of like the crows, uh, is non-releasable. Uh, just like... But Finn was born in captivity. Foxes... Uh, I have a soft spot here because there are so many fictional foxes. Yeah. Robin Hood from Disney, Nick from Zootopia, Fox McCloud. You know, his Star name Fox. used to be Nick. And then really? we got him here and I was like, I'm not having a fox named after Nick Palm, so I changed, we changed <laughs> it. I think what Maya's doing here is so, is so cool. I mean, I, I just, I'm all smiles right now. Whenever, just seeing everything here and seeing how every animal is just completely, like, you know, excited to see attention and affection, you know, we're part of the, part of the solution we wanna see in this world where the animals are like um, being maintained, um, the education with being able to, like, you know, correct these often like facilitated myths about, you know, what animals are like, you know, is taking care of an animal automatically better than rescuing an animal? They're two different things here. You know, there, there are some animals that you just, can, you just cannot legitimately give a happy environment in captivity. And you have to figure out, you know, what our role is with our friends. Animals are our friends. So thank you for having me aboard. Thank you for giving me that tour, Maya. And thank you for watching this video. That means a lot. Thank you very much. We're done here. Peace.